Hello, our church family and friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before we jump into the message, I just want to say that our church is a non-denominational church that meets in Madison, Wisconsin. And if you are looking for a church, we would invite you to make our church your church today. If you live too far outside of the Madison area, we're still so thankful that you've joined us. Continue to join us online. It blesses me to see you there. If you have a prayer request or you want to just get a hold of the ministry, just get a hold of us. You can email us, call us, uh, go to our website, whatever you would like to do to contact us through social media. We would love to hear from you. And if you're able to come visit us one day, we would love to see you in person. Uh, but we are continuing our series called uh, The Ministry of Jesus. And today, and we, we get this message out of Luke chapter 4, what Jesus read aloud uh, to his synagogue and said that today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. So we want to look at that scripture, that prophecy that was prophesied about the Savior and Jesus reading it, and it lists what he is going to do in his ministry. And we want to go through that and see what the Lord is going to do. Now, today we've titled this sermon, Mending. All right, let's look at Luke chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as it was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. It was Jesus' custom to go to church. I believe that is a good custom that we should imitate, imitate and emulate from Christ. You know, even the New Testament tells us, forsake not the similes of yourselves together, especially in the latter days. We need to be getting together, not only in church, but as members and brothers and sisters in Christ, going to each other's home, hanging out with each other. The Bible says that we should get together, forsaking not the similes of yourself together. And we have to remember the Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron. We get sharper when we hang out together. All right. Now it says he stood up to read verse 17. And there was uh, delivered unto him the book of the prophet Elijah. And when it had been, uh, had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Uh, and so one of the ministries of Jesus that he said he was going to do is heal the brokenhearted. In the United States, one of my largest altar calls that I've ever had besides salvation was for the brokenhearted. And I would just never did it before. I've really just felt by the Holy Spirit to, if you're brokenhearted, God wants to heal your heart. I want to pray for you. Believe God for healing. And I was dumbfounded at the amount of people that responded. It was absolutely crazy for me at that time. I did not think that that was going to be a huge altar call. And I think it's something that we deal with, that every Christian has dealt with, uh, and we hold on to it. You know, we can believe God for physical healing. We can believe God for salvation. There are certain promises that we believe God for, but sometimes I think we overlook the fact that God mends the broken heart. And so I, I want to look here. Uh, in the English, broken heart is one word. But it, it's, you know, it has two uh, words put together, right? And so in the uh, Hebrew, or in the Greek, it is actually two words. And I want to look at these two words. The word broken here is the word sun tree bowl. And it means to break, to shatter to pieces, to bruise. And then the word heart is the word cardia. And this is exactly where we get the word cardiac from, which means related to the heart, or cardio, where we uh, you know, get the heart working, get the heart pumping. And so broken heart. So the word broken again is shattered to pieces and bruised. And the word uh, heart here is the word cardi, uh, cardia, which is the word just meaning the heart. And just let me speak on this for a moment. Um, I remember, and I, I may get into it a little more, uh, but I remember as a kid hearing the word, my heart hurt, or that hurts my heart. And I used to think that was just um, a saying, just something that we say 
uh, to show that we're really hurt by someone uh, by what someone did. Uh, I had no idea that your heart, as a kid, I had no idea that your heart could really ache and hurt. And science has proven that uh, emotions can have much stress on the heart. Uh, and it's interesting, I, you know, I like to read articles and lots of things, uh, and they're starting to think, you know, your heart communicates with your brain, your brain communicates with your heart and your gut, and that word gut feeling, if you've ever had a gut feeling, that they're starting to say that they believe memories could possibly be stored and, uh, and feelings and emotions in the heart and in the gut, uh, that they can hold memories, which is insane, uh, or at least for me to think about, uh, but science is just now starting to scratch the surface of what some of our emotions, where they're stored, and how we use them. Uh, there's even been, I've read uh, muscle memory and um, uh, certain things that where the emotions, where people, let me put it this way, uh, there has been stories of heart patients, it's got a heart replacement, that have emotions or memories of the person who donated them. Uh, now, I don't know enough about that. I've researched it a little bit, and there are a lot of stories online, and there's some uh, scientists that are starting to research this to see what is included there. Uh, but the Bible speaks of the heart. Uh, and let's, let me just bring up a couple scriptures, Proverbs 23 and 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he, eat and drink, said he to thee, but but this heart is not with thee. Now let's look at Matthew 9 and verse 4. Jesus, knowing uh, their thoughts, said, Therefore, think ye evil in your hearts. And so we, we have emotions and feelings, and there could be stress on the body that will cause organs to absolutely feel the stress and the pain of some of the things that we have gone through. And so today I want to look at a broken heart and I want to, if you're experiencing or have a broken heart, I want to get God's power to you today, His ministry to you today to heal your broken heart. We're going to go through it and I'm believing today that if you have that, if you say, that's me, I've had a broken heart. I feel pain from an event, from something I've done, from something somebody else has done, from circumstances that no one could control, whatever it caused it. Uh, today, I want your heart healed. That is a ministry of Jesus, and we need to believe the Lord for it. Today, we're going to go through the process of healing a broken heart. If you have ever been hurt so bad, that your heart was broken, that your heart was shattered, that your heart was bruised. I want us to get to the other side. God wants you to live a life with a heart that is intact, the heart that is whole, and stress off of your life. Let's look at Psalms 147 and verse 3. He healed the broken in heart, and he binds up their wounds. Now, I believe God is going to heal you today. The Holy Spirit may bring some memories up to you. He may bring memories to your mind that may have some pain associated with them. He's not bringing them up to hurt you. He's bringing them up so He can heal you. And I want to look at Isaiah 42 in verse 3. It says, A bruised reed shall he not break. What is he saying? The Holy Spirit is saying, I want to bring up some memories that may have pain. But it's not there so I can break the last straw. It's not there so that I can cause pain in your life. It's there so we can mend it. We don't want to just cover a wound. We want it healed. We want it back together. We, we want you working and operating in life whole. Nothing holding you back. When I was a teenager, and um, it's not a story I like to go into because it's 
today still causes me to cry. Has God healed me? Absolutely. Because at a point in my life, it held on to me so strong that it affected everything. It made me depressed. It, it, it shattered my heart. That's, that was the day that I found out that your heart could truly hurt. Uh, without going into much detail, because I don't want to bring up wounds for other people, or, and I hold nothing against anyone. Uh, it was a, a family situation that shattered and rocked my world. So bad that I prayed constantly for the Lord to just let me go home to be with Him. That this pain and suffering was so strong. And I didn't know at the time. And my, my doctrine was not where it is today. But I remember thinking, if only I could take my own life. And thank God for His intervening. And thank God for Him changing my life and healing my heart. God intervened in my life and I could never deny His existence because of that day. And my heart was still hurting after He intervened. And I remember I went to a church service with my pastor. And he called me up from, from the pews. And he said, he said, your heart is hurting. And he said, God is going to take that pain from you. He didn't use the word that the Bible said, healing the brokenhearted, but that is exactly what God did. And I'll never forget it. He laid hands on me, and he, he stated, he stated, God is going to take this pain away from you. In three, two, one. And when he hit one, I felt that weight lift off to me. All of a sudden, that stress, I didn't even know was there. That heaviness that I had no idea was there. I felt it, but it was so normal because I've had it for so long. God brought it off of me. Do I still cry when I think about it? Obviously, yes. Obviously, yes. But does it hold me? Does it pressure on me? Does it stop me from advancing in my life? Does it stop me from doing things in my life like it did at one time? Absolutely not. The stress and the pain, the physical, emotional pain that that caused me, lifted off of me that day and never, ever came back. And today, I am believing God that He will lift that pain off of you. We're going to say a prayer. And I believe God is going to heal a lot of the brokenhearted today. Yes, Jesus saves. That is, you, we've talked about that last week. Salvation. That is one of the ministries of Jesus. But Jesus did not stop there. He has come to heal the brokenhearted. He wants to help you right now, right where you are. He didn't, he didn't just come so you could have salvation and one day go to heaven, which that is part of salvation. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. That is part of salvation. But it does not end there. He wants to help you today. He wants to help you in everyday life. He wants to bless you. He wants you to walk in all His promises that are in Him, yes, and in Him, amen. God wants to help you through everyday life. And I believe that today is going to change your life like never before. That some chains are going to fall off you. Some weights are going to fall off you. Some pains are going to leave you today. One of the things I'm going to do 
is we're going to go in prayer. And I'm going to ask the Lord to bring some memories back to your mind where your heart is still broken. They've never been dealt with. And there may be some pain associated with it. But again, I promise you, the Holy Spirit is not bringing a thought to bring pain. He's bringing that thought up so He can bring healing. All right. I'm going to have a prayer that I want you to pray. I'm going to read you the prayer first because I don't want you praying a prayer you don't know what you're doing. I want you to see it so you can agree with it. But what we're going to do is we're going to apply faith to what Jesus already done for us on the cross. And that's the same way we get saved. We hear God's word. We hear what He's done for us for salvation. And the Bible tells us that if we would believe with our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, we shall be saved. We heard it, and then we did it. Now, we're going to have apply the work of the cross, just like we do to salvation. We step out in faith, and we apply the word for a broken heart. We're going to see what the Lord has done. We're going to recognize the part of His ministry. And by faith, we're going to apply it to our situation. All right, I want to read you this prayer that we're going to pray. Almighty Father, I submit these memories to you. I ask you to heal me from all the stress and give me holy forgetfulness. I choose now by an act of my will to forgive, to forget, and to be healed in Jesus' name. I want to explain something. When I say holy forgetfulness, and when I say to forget, it does not mean you won't have the memories. The memories are still there. But let me put it this way. Jesus, God Almighty, has stated that when we ask for forgiveness, that He forgives us. And He says that our sins are thrown as far as the east is from the west, that He remembers them no more. It doesn't mean that He doesn't have the memory. What it means is He will never bring it up again against you. He will never hold it against you. He will never use it against you. He won't bring it up anymore. E even um, there's people that when you get in an argument, and we don't argue with God, but when we get in an argument, they'll bring up everything in the past that they said they've forgiven us for and use it to hurt us and cut us. Uh, and so God is saying, I will never bring it up again. I will never hold it against you. And on judgment day, I choose to remember them no more. I choose to never hold them against you. I choose to have them covered and destroyed by the blood of Jesus and that I will not bring it up on judgment day. Is that not fantastic? He never holds it against us again. And so today, when we say holy forgetfulness, I choose to forget. It's not that the memories go away but that we're going to hold those who did it blameless. We're, gonna, we're not going to bring it up again. Now, look at here. I want to be very clear. Uh, if you're in the midst, somebody hurt you physically or mentally or emotionally, and there's a court issue going on, I'm not saying that you're not going to testify about things that happened uh, and protecting other people in that case because we don't want to see it done again. But what I'm saying is in your advancement in life, your happiness in life, the pain, the emotional pain that that stress is causing in your life, we're going to choose to not have those pains on our life. We're going to choose to let it go and walk free. And I've already said this, there are memories I still have that make me cry today. But thank God, it does not hold me back like it once did. I choose to forgive any person associated with this memory. Any person. If it's someone else, now look, I'm not saying you have to be best friends with anybody that has hurt you in the past. There are people in my life that have hurt me drastically that my past with them 
will never look like my future with them. Doesn't mean I don't forgive them. I just don't, I have boundaries and I don't set myself up to be hurt by somebody who has hurt me over and over and over again. I don't, I don't live a life like that. But I do want to say this too. When I say forgive people, sometimes you're the one that needs the forgiveness. Something that you have done, something that you have said, something that has caused you shame. You're going to have to forgive yourself as well and let go of the pain that that has caused you. Right now, right where you are, I want to begin to pray. I know this message is not that long, but I, I, I'm I, believing that this may be a shorter message, but it is a powerful one. Right where you are, I want you to close your eyes and bow your head or however you feel comfortable close, uh, talking to the Lord. But one of the reasons why I want you to close your eyes is so that you shut off it. everything else that is going on around you. And I want you right now, I want to say a prayer, then we're going to say a prayer together, and then I just want to say a prayer of agreement with you. But right now, Holy Spirit, if there is anything, any memories of, that need to come up, that we have a broken heart that needs to be fixed, I ask Holy Spirit that you begin to bring them up now in Jesus' name. That my brothers and sisters, that these, these thought processes, these thoughts that we have had, these memories that we have had, that you are bringing up from our past, that it may not just bring pain. That's not why we're praying this. We're praying so that we can have healing in our hearts. Father, we ask you to bring the memories that are hurtful, harmful back to us. They may be mistakes that we have made. They may be memories of things we have said or that we have done. Father, maybe there's statements we made to our kids that we should have never made, to our spouse that we should have never made, to our parents that we have never made, should have never made. Maybe there are statements that were made to us by a spouse, by a kid, by our teachers, by our parents that should have never been made. We thank you that according to Luke chapter 4, we know that healing our broken heart is one of your ministries. And we ask right now that you would do exactly what you said you would do. Heal the broken, the shattered, and the bruised prayers in our lives today. Right now, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Almighty Father, I submit these memories to you. I ask you to heal me now from all the stress and give me holy forgetfulness. I choose now by an act of my will to forgive, to forget, to be healed in Jesus' name. Name. Now let me pray a prayer of agreement for you and over you. Father, right now, everybody under the sound of my voice, I agree with them that these memories are healed by the blood of Jesus. I speak to the very hearts of my brothers and sisters to be healed whole right now in Jesus' name. I speak to the stress that is associated with those memories and I command them to go in Jesus' name. If there is any unholy spirit that is attached to these memories, they must go now in the name of Jesus. No inferiority, no insecurity, no pride, no anger, no unforgiveness, resentfulness, embarrassment, humiliation, or shame can stay attached to these memories. They must go in Jesus' name. These memories can never be used to punish, can never be used to hold back, can never 
use to stop them from moving forward in any area of their lives. Their spiritual life is open. They will grow in the things of God. Blessings will follow them all the days of their life. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, God. That that stress is broken. That shame is gone. Those pains will never be a part of our lives again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. My brothers and sisters, my family in the body of Christ, I'm believing that your life will never be the same. Just like when my pastor prayed for me, and it lifted off. I'm believing God right now. Whether you felt it like I did or whether you felt nothing, I'm believing in the next day, two, three, four, week, two weeks, that you're going to begin to notice, hey, I just, there's something that's left. I believe right now that you have been set free and that your heart has been mended in Jesus' name. My friends, I hope this message blessed you. If this has touched your life, if you notice a difference, please get a hold of us. Let us know. I would love to hear your testimonies. God is good and his mercy endures forever. There's a statement I used to always say. If I wasn't saved, you know what I would do? Get saved. This is truly the only life to live. I'm so thankful for God in my life as I know that you are thankful for God in yours. But if you would look at me today and say, Pastor, I've, I've never lived this life where God is in my life. I've, I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior. Well, maybe you have accepted Jesus as your Savior at one time, but you walked away like the prodigal son. The beauty is the story of the prodigal son does not end with the prodigal son. It ends with a running, loving, and forgiving father. And the father was looking for the son, saw him from afar off and ran to him. Today, God wants to run to you, but what you're going to have to do is, like the prodigal son, come to your right mind and say, I'm coming home. And if you've never accepted Jesus today, you've got to say, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. The Bible says if we would confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we shall be saved. If you're ready to make that commitment, to make that statement today, to come home or to give your life to Jesus, I want you to say this prayer with me. Repeat this after me. I confess. Jesus is the Son of God. I believe in my heart. We believe what God has said is true. That today, I am saved. Not might be, but I am. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> well, I hope this message has blessed you. If you've given your life to Jesus, call us. We want to pray for you by name. We love you. We're so excited about what God is doing in the local church and in your personal life. And again, our church is a non-denominational church in Madison, Wisconsin. And we would invite you to make our church your church today. If you can come join us in person, we would love to see you. If you can't, continue to join us online. My friend, we will see you in person or online next week.